sense for us to match the forklift usage or the cost allocated to that usage in the year in which it is being used. So that's going to be the idea of depreciation. So we're going to uh, talk about the methods to calculate that depreciation at a later time, but the most obvious method will be a straight line method, uh, which means we'll take that cost, we'll divide it by the useful life of the forklift, and then we will expense it over that useful life. Uh, but we won't go into that calculation in any more detail than that <laughs> at this point. They're gonna have to give us the number at this point, so we have the 330, that is what uh, the depreciation expense is determined to be. So then you would think, well, why don't we decrease the value of the forklift with a credit by uh, 330? And the reason we don't do that notice that we did do that in supplies we said hey supplies went down we'll just write down supplies from this to that why don't we write down the forklift from this to whatever it is after the decline in value and the reason is because we want to tell our reader two things we want to tell our reader hey we bought the forklift for this amount we you know at the end of the year there's still one forklift it's not like supplies it's not like I counted supplies and there's less than one forklift but we do know that it went down in value and we need to represent that so we want to tell you uh, by making this new account that this is the estimate of the value that we're assuming it went down by so this is just an estimate we're telling our reader hey it's just an estimate that it went down by we still have one forklift that's what it cost we're assuming it went by down by this month that's why this is going to be a contra asset we're going to call this a contra account a contra asset meaning that all assets have debit balances this asset has a credit balance it's contra to the norm why is it contrary to the norm? Because it's really the credit half of this account. This account is the debit half, and this account is kind of like the credit half. So we took the T and we broke it out into a seven and like an R. And, uh, and that's not an exact thing, but that's kind of what happened. This credit belongs to this account. All right, so then we're gonna expense that as we use it. And of course, we're not gonna call it uh, office equipment expense. We're gonna call it depreciation expense on the office equipment so it is related to the deterioration or decline in value of the office equipment or more precisely better put probably the allocation of the cost of the office equipment over the life that it will be used over all right so that's going to be 330 on the debit and of course on the credit side as well so debits have to equal the credits there's our transaction make sure to put the negative in the credit or to make this worksheet work properly and then we're going to go over here and post that. So let's do that and see if it does what we would expect it to do. So we're over here in I-21, I-21 equals, and we'll pull, uh, point to the 330, and that will bring the expense up by 330, put us out of balance, brought net income down. Why? Because uh, the revenue of 31.8 minus the expenses, the expenses have gone up, equals the 21,320, also down here in the taskbar because we have highlighted it will calculate for us. And so the expense went up, bringing net income down. All right, so then we're gonna go over here and note that this, uh, it represents a credit in brackets, not a, not a negative number for us, it's not a loss. It's representing a credit, meaning the revenue is are beating the expenses. Now we're gonna go to cell I11 equals and point to the credit of 300 in this case. Uh, actually, let me delete that. It should be 330, 330 credit of 330. And note what would happen if I if I made that error. Let's make that error. And note what would happen if we made that error and I posted this. Uh, this would go up, but we'd still be off by $30. Why would we be off by $30? Because this transaction, the debits don't equal the credits off by 30. So then if I change this now, to a 330 that would put us back in balance and notice it happened automatically because we already had that number in the cell so I can repost it if that's confusing we can repost it and say that equals the 330 goes from 330 beginning to uh, 660 up by the 330 and so there we have the any balance of 660 what happened to the book value then it went from 14.5 minus the 330 or 14170 to 14.5 minus 660 or uh, 13.840. Book value went down. All right, so next transaction we're going to have once again on 531. 
they're all on 531. And this represents the, the D here, and we have accrued salaries. So once again, I'm gonna ungreen these so we can go through our series of questions, and we're gonna say there's gonna be one account above the blue line related to salaries. And if we look through here, hmm, how about salaries payable has the word salaries in it, so we're gonna say, I'm assuming that will be affected. How about below the blue line? We're looking for something with salaries, and we have salaries expense, so I'm gonna say that's probably the likely uh, factor. We see that all expenses have debit balances represented by the fact that they do not have brackets and they all go up. Expenses generally only go up, therefore we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy that, going to right click, going to paste it, one, two, three. I'm not going to put the number in there yet. We're going to think about uh, the other side, which of course will be the other account being salaries payable. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the salaries payable and copy that and I'm going to put my cursor in uh, C15 right click and paste it one two three so we can see which way the accounts are going to go and which accounts are going to be affected pretty much by going through the series of questions without knowing what is going on so now let's talk about what's going on what is salaries payable why is there something in it how does it get there uh, if we think about uh, salaries expense note that we in the most simplistic type of payroll setting we're going to tell the payroll department or, or have the payroll department say record payroll more on a cash basis than on a accrual basis. Uh, obviously, we work if we work hourly, we're making money hourly. The payroll isn't generally going to be recorded hourly. We know that if I worked today and I get paid Friday, that when I work, I earn the revenue. But it doesn't really make sense for, for the payroll department, of course, to accrue revenue hourly. That would be a too time consuming and not practical. So what we're gonna say is if the payroll department for a hypothetical purposes pays people on Friday, every Friday they pay people, we're just gonna say, hey, payroll department, when you pay people, you just uh, debit the salaries expense and you credit wages payable and that's fine. But when we make the financial statements as of the cutoff date, as of 531, we wanna be on a perfectly accrual basis as of that time period. And therefore, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're recording any discrepancy. So what's the likelihood then of Friday landing on the um, 31st, right? It's probably not going to happen, like one seventh of... So that means if Friday land on, on any other day than the 31st, then we're going to have some days worked for which uh, we have not yet paid the employees. For example, if uh, Friday landed on Wednesday, uh, if the 31st landed on a Wednesday, then as of the 31st, in that scenario, we would have three days of payroll that where people have worked, we owe the money, but we're not going to pay it until the next month because we're going to pay it on Friday. Uh, this may seem trivial, but when you talk about a lot of employees, that can be fairly significant. So as of the financial statement date, we're just going to say, okay, we're just going to make it right as of this cutoff date. And you may be saying, well, where's the 120 coming from now? Uh, this, in this case, this came from the prior adjusting entry. And there's a couple different ways we could take care of the 120. Uh, one is that we could tell the payroll department, we want you to reverse this entry next time you run payroll. That's not always a great thing to do because uh, that confuses the payroll department. <laughs> we could have a reverse in entry uh, right after the uh, month is over so we could make it correct and then reverse it right after or or we could reverse it you know the next time that we do the adjusting entries on the next time around this one basically we looks like we're reversing it the next time around and we'll talk about the next couple options on how to how to set that up and that basically uh, the preference is what what is best for the system that we are are using in in our particular accounting department so in this case we have uh, 120 in there already and this accrued salaries means that it should be 200 as of that time period so this 120 needs to be basically adjusted to 200 at this time frame so if we take out the calculator we're gonna say well okay well 200 minus 120 well, that's 80 so the adjustments gonna have to be uh, 280 to increase this amount so we're gonna say 80 debit 80 credit 
and once we have done that then this number then should be 80 after we post it let's see if that's what happens so we're gonna scroll down here I'm now in cell I 18 equals we're gonna point to the $80 debit that's gonna go uh, from eight from 800 up by 80 to 880 so we're recognizing that partial uh, period of expenses even though we have not yet paid it so now we're over here on cell I 13 equals and we will then point to the salaries payable and that will make this credit balance go up in the credit direction to 200 which is what we determined that uh, the accrued salaries should be that's what we owe as of the cutoff date the end of May in this case all right now we're gonna go to E which is also gonna be on 531 as all adjusting entries are and we have prepaid rent as of the end of the month being 1006 all right so let's clear off the green here and we can go through our series of questions so we're gonna have one balance sheet account above the blue line related to rent in this case and we see hmm prepaid rent possibly so I'm gonna highlight that green we're just gonna be one account below the blue line related to rent how about rent expense in this case and we know that expense accounts all have debit balances represented by the fact that they do not have brackets and they all generally only go up and therefore we're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit so I'm gonna copy that I'm gonna put that on top in cell C17 right click paste it one two three so we're gonna debit the rent expense therefore we must be crediting the prepaid rent so I'm gonna copy that I'm gonna put that on the bottom we can see what we're doing without really knowing why we're doing it if we go through that series of questions now let's talk about why we're doing it what is prepaid rent how did it get there why would we have it normally we put we pay rent monthly so if we rent the office building then of course we have to pay rent similar to if we were renting an apartment or something like that and uh, if we paid it monthly we might just expense the rent however it is very possible for us to pay prepay the rent and pay for more than one month at one time if we were to do that if we just expensed it when the payment happened then that would make net income go down by a lot by the amount of multiple uh, rent payments and again it would kind of mess up the comparison if we if we pay for a year's rent worth this month and then next month if obviously we didn't then the um, net income would be reduced by a year's worth of rent in one month and then the following month we would have uh, we'd be looking a lot better because we would have no rent expense and uh, from an accrual basis of the matching principle that doesn't make sense because we want to allocate the rent as it's being used in the time period not necessarily as it's being paid so that we can measure performance in a more precise way so that means that uh, we have to we have to if we pay for more uh, than one month of rent then we should have the accounting department once again say whenever you pay the rent don't put it into rent expense put it in the prepaid rent then we in the adjusting department will go into prepaid rent and say okay how many months have passed and how much of that rent then should be consumed in the in the form of an expense as of the financial statement date in this case being May 31st so if in this case it says prepaid rent as of the end of the month so that's what it should be as of the end of the month as of uh, 531 so if we take out our calculator then we need this number here to be that number there so the 3002 minus the 16 means that we need 16 it's half and so we and so we're gonna have to do that so I'm gonna I'll do that same calculation here so we're in cell uh, D17 equals 3002 uh, minus 16 equals 16. We're going to have a credit for the same amount, a credit of 16, and there's our transaction. So let's go ahead and post this out. So I'm going to go over here in I19 and we're going to say equals and then go point to that debit. That's going to make the account go from zero up to 16, bring net income down. So it off puts us out of bounds, brings net income down. And because the expense went up, brings net income down. How do we calculate net income? Uh, it's the credit of revenue less all the expenses. Comes out to 19.6 on the task bar, which is also on this formula as well. Then let's go up to I8 
equals and we're going to go to the credit of 1 6 and once we hit enter this now number should go down to 1 6 because uh, we reduced it to prepaid rent what it should be as of the end of the time period all right so let's clean off uh, the green again and go to the next area the last and final adjusting journal entry before we have to stop this exercise also going to be recorded on 531 and we have unearned that should say unearned fees on May 31st so we have unearned fees so we're gonna do our same thing what's gonna be the account above the blue line and yes this is not a trick question it's gonna be unearned fees and so we're gonna put that here and we could call unearned fees we could call it unearned income is really what we're talking about in this case because fees in a service company would be income so that in mind having that in mind what would be the account below the blue lines a little bit more tricky than some of the uh, fire prior ones but uh, that would be revenue or income so we're talking about unearned fees being fees being income and then the other side then would be revenue or income if we look at the accounts below the blue line revenue and expenses revenue expenses income statement accounts only go up this one is an income account which has a credit balance it only goes up how do we make something go up we do the same thing to it which in this case would be another credit so we're gonna credit this account so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna put it on the bottom so here's the here's the uh, date I'm gonna put it on the bottom in cell C21 because credits traditionally go on the bottom and note this is the first one really that we're dealing with the income half here right and then we have the other account which has got to be unearned revenue unearned fees in this case I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to put that on top that will be the debit so we can see which way they go what accounts will be affected if we go through this line of question without really knowing what's going on now let's talk about what's going on what is unearned uh, fees unearned revenue how did it get there so not every company is going to have unearned fees so this one's going to be a little confusing because it depends on the type of company that we have for example uh, if we're a tax practice off oftentimes we're going to do the work before we send out the bill if on the other hand we sell something like magazine subscriptions then we're also we're often going to get paid before we send out the magazine in a situation like that if we get paid before we do the work that's when we would have this situation of unearned revenue meaning people paid us for services we're going to do in the future if that happens then our accounting department over here they would have received the cash but they couldn't record a credit to revenue they would have to record a credit to unearned revenue because it's a liability we receive the cash we owe something in the future what do we owe we owe our work so we're gonna say okay they're just gonna put it into unearned revenue in the accounting department in the adjusting process then we have to say okay of that six thousand five hundred that was unearned that we had not yet done work for how much had we done work for and there in in this case we're saying that we have 1,500 that should still be unearned that have, we have not yet done the work for as of the end of the month, as of the cutoff date. So of the 6-5, we have only 1,005 left that has not yet been earned as of the end of the month. Therefore, we need to make this amount go down to the 1-5, which is a subtraction problem of 6-5 minus one five gives us the five thousand so i'm going to do that same calculation over here we're going to say this equals the six five minus one five five thousand that's going to be the debit will also be the credit negative five thousand for the purposes of this worksheet then let's record this we're going to go to the uh, unearned revenue up here in cell i14 equals going to point to the unearned revenue of five thousand bringing the amount from here down to 1.5, which is what we determined it should be. So that looks correct. Then we're going to go to the revenue side in I-17 equals. We're going to point to the revenue over here of 5,000. It's going to go from 31.8 up in the revenue direction to 36.8. What happened to net income? It went up in that case. Why? Because revenue went up, net income is revenue minus expenses. So we have revenue beating expenses by the 21,640, also represented down here in the formula bar of 24,640. 
So we now have the adjusted trial balance that should be as correct as we can make it as of the cutoff date being 531 now. We can use that information to make the financial statements.